You know, Rick, we are getting older. No. Yeah. Not me. Yeah. Oh. You're still always going to be older than Too me. Bad. Too bad. But everybody always wants to hear about the early days. And yeah. one of the questions that came in on the Facebook page, because this is interactive, we did this over Facebook, came from an extra made of candles. Yeah. Named Lenny Long. He owns a recording studio in Sarasota. Uh -huh. And his question is, who is Sloopy? Who is Sloopy? Mm -hmm. And who is Sloopy? Okay. Sloopy. Uh, that's an interesting story. The song uh, writer credits are Burt Burns and Wes Farrell. And Burt Burns was also the president of Bang Records. So they had Hang On Sloopy as a number one hit in 1964 by a group called The Vibrations. So simply the idea was to find a band that looked like the Beatles now in 65 to redo it as a white song, a white chart hit. And uh, they found us. Um, so at some point people said, who is this Sloopy? And Burt Burns told me, he was the president of the label and also one of the guys who has credit for writing the song, that he had lived for a while in Cuba, and he said at that time he wrote, uh, take, it, take a little, little piece of my heart and twist and shout and, and other songs, but he said Sloopy was a colloquialism, he put it, or a nickname for girls in Cuba. He said the guys would just go, hey, Sloopy, how you doing? And he said he took that and he wrote Hang On Sloopy. Later on, about 25 or 30 years later, someone sent me an article from the St. Louis Sunday insert section, um, color part they put in the Sunday paper, St. Louis. And in this mag little magazine, newspaper magazine, there was a story, an interview they did with a guy who was a very, very successful businessman. He was successful, made a lot of money in business, had nothing to do with the music business, just business. And they said, one of the questions, to what do you attribute your business acumen, acumen? How, you know, why are you such a successful business? And he said, well, I've learned to really take care of my, uh, do my due diligence before I go into any business deal. Because when I was a kid in high school, I wrote this song and some guys came through town and they really liked it a lot and they bought it from me for X amount of dollars. He said, I thought it was really a lot of money in those days. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, several thousand dollars. He said, but I thought that was a lot of money as a high school kid, so I sold sure. them the rights to that song and it went ahead to become a big hit all over the world. And uh, that taught me I better really watch my business dealings in the future because I've, in, in effect, lost a lot of money on that deal. <laughs> and they said in this article, well, what song was that? And he said, I wrote, Hang on Sloopy. So, here we go. In other words, a guy, a kid in St. Louis, when he was just a kid in high school, wrote right. this song. He didn't go to Cuba. He didn't know any special Sloopies necessarily. We don't know for sure. But all it really shows us was the guy, Burt Burns, that now we know bought the song from a kid in St. Louis. Didn't have any, you know, had nothing to do with being in Cuba or anything like that because the name was already in the song that he bought from the kid in St. Louis. The bottom line is we have no clue who Sloopy was. Uh, but the, all the stories we've heard, including the one from the Ohio State um, marching band, Ohio State University has a thing in their yearbooks every year where a girl and a lady in, in uh, Columbus, Ohio says she's Sloop. Ms. In fact, I think her last name is Sloop. Jean Sloop or something like that. She says she's the famous Sloopy. Uh, she said she worked in a restaurant and would sing sometimes and people would go, hey Sloopy, sing another song. And she said that was where Sloopy came from. So she's lying. The guy that wrote the song, or, or was paid, bought the song, uh, Burt Burns, he's, he's lying. lying. And uh, we have no idea who Sloopy is, but a kid in St. Louis wrote it and was cheated out of all the money. There you go. So Sloopy. still don't know who Sloopy is. Um, one of the questions that came in is about Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. We already talked a little bit about Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. And I understand that it used to be a house band at a bar in New York City called The Scene. Yeah. And Mark Kersey, 
who painted this oil painting of you. That one right there. There I am. There, that's you. And he did this from a photograph. Mark has never met Rick yet. Hopes to. Um, would cool like painting. to know. Cool painting. He would like to know if you ever played with Jimi Hendrix. Okay. I played with Jimi many times. At that place, the scene that you said where mm -hmm. the McCoys were kind of known as the house band there right. for oh, oh, years, several years. And all during that time, all the famous people that came through town would come to the scene nightly uh, after their gigs. Jimmy would do a gig somewhere out in the United States and fly home in time to uh, get into the scene because they didn't even close the doors till 4 a.m. And then sometimes they'd keep on going after that. So they all got up and jammed, and I jammed with Jimmy many times at the scene, many times. I've heard one of the recordings that's out now, um, it says it's from the scene and it's live, kind of very rough stuff, but it says it's Jimmy and Johnny Winter jamming together. Well, that particular cut is not Johnny Winter, it's me. Um, so I'm on that, you can actually hear me playing with Jimmy, but I played with Jimmy many times. I had guitars stolen once, he loaned me some of his to uh, play that particular night. And, uh, he was a he was a great <laughs> he was a nice man is what I'll say about it. it it's a sad story. It is a you sad know, story. Um, he was really hurt by the whole Black Panther movement, saying that he was less of a black man because he was pandering to white a white audience, and that made Jimmy it hurt him. Oh. And uh, he went ahead and, and changed his band around. That's when he became Band of Gypsies, and, and there are some concert stories where he actually uh, stopped playing because he felt like the audience wasn't. He tried to do less of his showmanship and more playing. And showmanship is part of what makes you a great entertainer. So it uh, made him a sad kind of guy. He didn't really know how to justify these two things, playing for his black audience or playing for the white audience. He didn't really understand that he was playing for all of us That's at right. the time. And uh, the Black Panthers were a, a kind of a... Uh, bad movement and they still are today so um, jimmy love jimmy we don't love the black panthers <laughs> now mark wants to know if you ever intimidated playing with him not at all not at all i hear my stuff in jimmy i hear recordings of jimmy and i hear stuff that i played that he picked up so uh nice i'm not intimidated i wasn't intimidated to play with anyone well, there's a story that Eric Clapton walked off the stage one time after playing with Jimi Hendrix. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, that, need I say more? No. <laughs> you don't. I won't say anything about Eric. So, you know... Um, Can't say anything good about somebody. Don't say anything. That's right. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we were taught. Uh -huh. And try and practice as much. Yeah. Um, I just have out a few of your CDs here. We spoke about Jenda's new album, Hot Not and cool. cool. There it is. And this is actually a limited edition. It's one of 100 that somehow got gifted to Larry Danner <laughs> here at the Cavern because that she was did a different sequence, an original sequence. That's correct. So it is um, only one of 100. I know correct. where one of 100 is, and I know where two of 100 is. There you go. That would be in my house. This is one of one, this guitar right That's here. That's one of one? <laughs> yeah. The guy that made this guitar, you can see it's, uh, you know, I don't know if you know, but the headless is a Steinberger invention. And the body shape is like a Rickenbacker guitar. And as soon as Rickenbacker heard that the guy, Ed Roman, this is a Roman instrument, Ed Roman had made this, they came and they said, you will not make any more of these. <laughs> you can't make any more of these. You aren't licensed to make that Rickenbacker guitar shape. So uh, I have the only one of these that you How will ever that? see. And you brought it out of the house. Just to show you. Thank you so much. There you go. But I wanted to show everybody, you know, the inside of Jenna's CD. And I think it is one of the most beautiful CDs ever produced. I just mm -hmm. love that cover. Or, that's beautiful. And the fact that these are actual photos that either yeah. you or she took. Yeah, actually our friend Bridget who is the wife of uh, the engineer that recorded this music. Uh, his name's George Harris, mm -hmm. and uh, we worked with him for about 10 years now in, in uh, Clearwater, and he recorded it all, and his wife visited us in New Mexico and took the pictures at our she house. Did. 
Now, um, the person who plays all guitars and bass on this CD yes. would be you. It would be me. All guitars and bass. A lot of vocals. Now, this is one that gets a lot of airplay in my house. And I think you may have a lot of fans out there that are not aware of how deep into the blues you are. Oh, and um, I enjoy playing the blues a lot. And this is, I've done, uh, I believe, five CDs for Blues Bureau International. This is the latest one that mm -hmm. we recorded from scratch. And, and uh, mostly all my songs. There's a cover of a Jimi Hendrix song on there called about If that. Six Was Nine. And there's a cover of two uh, Ray Charles songs. One's called the Get Around, and, and uh, one is um, I'm Funny But I Still Love You, which is one of my favorites. So the rest are all mine, and, and those three covers. Two of my favorite guys, Ray Charles and Jimmy Hendrix. All right. Well, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with more from Mr. Rick Narringer. Good. <laughs> 